Standing in front of Surah al dukhan Ayah number 29. A very strong ayah. فَمَا بَكَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَمَا بَكَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ After the death of Fir'aun and Allah drowned him and his junood, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, in Surah Al-Dukhan, ayah number 29, that the sama and the earth didn't cry upon the calf. Because he didn't have a good deed, then the sama and the earth didn't care about him. It make me remember Ali radiallahu anhu when he said, when a believer die, Hunaka Maudi'an, there is two places will cry upon his death. Ya Allah. What is this? Not my family, not my kids, not my wife. No. There is two places will cry when I exit this dunya. Ali radiallahu an, he said, Mawda' musallak, the place that you pray. When you die, it miss you. It cry. It cry because you're no longer fulfilling this spot in this earth and not comforting the earth. And the other place is the door of a'mal. When your a'mal, the good deed goes to the sama, it enters from a door. This door is shut down when you die. This door cry. He said, there is no longer this exit is available because the person who his good deed goes from this door, he died today, then this exit is closed. Ya Allah. It make me think a lot, ya khwani, and make me choose this topic. Now, there's one righteous man, they ask him, Ataskurullah, do you make zikr to Allah? He said, no. Then the people said, Ya Allah, you are a worshiper, you are a righteous man. How can you say that you don't remember Allah, zikr of Allah? He said, how can I mention someone that I didn't forget? I don't forget him, then I can mention him. And then they said to him, you don't miss Allah? He said, I don't miss him. He said, what? He said, you miss someone who's not present and Allah is present on my life. 24 7. He didn't forget me and I never forget him. Ya Ikhwani, Hinak, 10 witnesses upon us in this dunya. Be careful. Who's this 10? That they will come to witness and to be the evidence of your case in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we said two of them, Al-Ard was Sama, Wal-Layl wa Naha, and the night and the morning. What you do in the morning and what you do in the night, they are witness upon you. And the Hafaza, al kataba and the angel who write down your deed, they will bring your Suhuf, every Sahif, 99 Sahifa, each Sahifa, Madda Basarak, as far as you can go with your vision. Ya Ikhwani. There is stories that I'm bringing with this khutbah today. It gives me goosebump. Because I know people that they sacrifice their life for the masajid. They were pillars of masajid. And now they are gone. But the pillars is there. And the bricks is have the name of them. Because we went together in a journey. And we went there and here and we were fighting the time and the hour to bring the money to purchase this church that we call it Masjid Aliyah right now. These people are in the grave right now. And I'm sure that they are proud of what we're doing right now. But I'm praying that I see the remodeling by my eyes. The ground that you're walking upon. Talking to their neighbor, ground. And he said, Amarra bika zakiran. If somebody passed by you today, 
that he remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the earth said, Marra biya abid. There is a servant of Allah passed me, passed by. And he stopped in this spot, in top of me, and he prayed two rakahs. And so beautiful, two rakahs. He comforted me, and may Allah comfort him as he comforted us. Amen. Then the ground is a witness upon you. The wall is witness upon you. One of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he told him, I want to move closer to the masjid. And he heard, he said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said to him, I heard that you were, you and your family trying to move closer to the masjid. Stay. Because your house and the wall of the house is a witness upon you and your effort to go in all the way to the masjid. Ta'mir al-masajid is a witness upon you. As me going through a motion that I'm far away from my masjid for three months, it's really uncomfort my life. Giving khutbah here, even though that this is also a worship place, but I'm not comfortable. I want to go back to the house of Allah. I go every day, I'm making sure the improvement and if they are going, and uh, I discuss everything. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our deed. And the only one who knows your intention is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ahmad ibn Hanbal, and everybody know about Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he's one of the four scholars of the school of thought. He was in jail, and he was tortured. And the torture was so hard upon him that he was suffering and he was almost going to surrender to their opinion. And then there was a man, a maid, that he was with him in the jail, but he was a thief. And he knows Ahmad ibn Hanbal. And he tells him, Ya Sheikh, I'm a thief. And they've been torturing me to surrender and to tell them evidence about my theft and I stand solid even though that I am in a bottle even though that I'm wrong but I stand solid in my position and they didn't break me and you are in the truth then stand solid and don't let them break you Ahmad ibn Hanbal saying every time they torture me I remember the word of the thief the word of the thief affecting the Shaykh Ahmad ibn Hanbal. And he said, give me sabr and give me strength in my weakness time. Then when he came out of jail, he went to this man, the thief, to his house, trying to check on him and thank him for the support. But then he find him dead. He died. Ahmad ibn Hanbal cry upon him. And he from his sadness that he didn't met him and tell him thank you for your support he slept then he saw in Ru'ya that this thief in the Jannah then Ahmed ibn Hanbal knows his history and he said to him كيف حالك? how are you doing he said to him حال. the best condition أدخلني الله الجنة Allah put me in the Jannah then he said to him, how? <laughs> how I know that you are a thief? <laughs> he said to him, but what I did to you, my support to you, the strength that I give you in jail, Allah reward me Jannah. Then Ahmad ibn Hanbal cry on the thief, upon the thief, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put him with him in Jannah. Ya Allah! Then the Sama is witness, and the Ardr is witness, and the wall is witness, and you and me are witness upon each other. Al Ibad, Shuhada'un al Ibad. The human being, every one of us, witness upon each other. When a person died, he said, Ma tawaraha wa staraha. Some bad people said, He died. Wallahi, alhamdulillah, he was, oh my God. Every time he comes, he said to me, This person said, you know, this person said, this day talking about you. Mat raha was tarah. He rayahna. Rasulullah said, when a person die and you are carrying him, rush. Then they said to me, Rasulullah, why? 
He said, if he's a good man and he's going to paradise, send him faster to his destiny. And if he's a bad person, get rid of him. Don't carry him too much, too long. Because the grave is calling thy bad. Even the grave, ya akhi, your grave and my grave, we know, Allah knows where we're going to be in the grave. Some graves, they are welcoming us and say, Marhaban, welcome, I miss you, I'm waiting for you. Why? Because you're going to make my ground rawda min riyad al jannah. You're going to make me comfortable because I will be a piece of Jannah because you are a righteous man. And I'm going to, when they put you, I'm going to stretch and I'm going to be noor, ala noor, because you are a righteous man. We were waiting for you. وَلِعَزُ بِاللَّهِ The kafir or the mulhid or the one who doing bad deeds, the ground will reject him and will be saying, yo. We're going to hear the pain and we're going to hear the screaming. And then when he goes in, It will shrink you and will break all your lungs and everything. Then grave, wall, earth, sky, human being. Then what did you do, ya akhi? What did you do to make everybody witness upon your departure? Did you have effect on people around you? When people see you, they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they see you, they remember that the zikr, they see you, they say, remember the word of Rasulullah sallallahu Or you are a person who enter from this door and will exit from this door and no one will recognize your presence and your absence. Some people will make sure that the presence is affect la ilaha illallah with a bad way. Argument. If you give them your eyes, they will tell you, you give me your eyes without the eyelashes. You missed the eyelashes. You give me your eyes with the eyelashes. Some people like that and some people their present is a barakah. Their thoughts is a strength. Like the thief who gives the strength to the sheikh. The sheikh cry upon the thief. Then who cry upon you and me? We need to know. We need to know, ya ikhwani. And I'm going to tell you a story. All of you know the story. The man who killed 99 souls. Story that we heard it since we were children. There was a man who killed 99 souls. He's a murderer. Not for a reason of Islam and not for jihad. He was assassin. Then he went to Abid. Abid is different between Abid and Alim. He went to Abid who, who worshiped Allah blindly with no wisdom. And he said to him, yeah, you're, you know, you're a nice person. I killed 99 people. Alim in Tawbah. Can Allah forgive me? He said to him, shame on you. How dare you, you did that. Killed 99 souls for no reason. Ahlak Allah. Allah ahlakak. May Allah, you know, what, what happened with you? Then the man said, okay. 100. We're done. Completed to 100. Then he went back. He's seeking, he's seeking forgiveness. He's seeking repenting. Then this time he went to a scholar. And he asked him. He didn't tell him that the last one he didn't tell me and then I killed him. No, I was there. <laughs> then he said to him, I killed hundred souls. Ali Tawbah. Do I have a way to repent? He said to him, Waman yaqaf baynaka wa bayna Allah. Who stands in between you and Allah? Man yaqaf amamu tawbah. Bab tawbah. Bab tawbah maftuh. The door of Tawbah is open 24-7, but you are not the one who knocking the door. But in condition, ya ikhwani, and this is our topic today, the land is witness upon you. Then the island scholar, he said to him, the land is not good for you because they witness all your killing, hundred souls in this land. Then leave the land. 
and the people surrounding you, do you know that you are assassin? Then leave the people. Go somewhere else where the land is fresh and the people also don't know your background and your history. The man said, Khayr hikmah, this is wisdom. Start fresh, land and people. Then he moved. And when he moved, the death came. Then the death came before he reached his destiny. Then what happened? The angel of Azab, the Malaika Tulul Azab, they said, He's ours. He have to come to us. We get paid for that. Wa Malaika Rahma, they said, No, his intention is coming to us. He's belong to us. And they said, No. He's belonged to us. He's our client. Leave him to us. Fatashajara, they fight. Who take him? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Fawq Sabah Samawat order the land that he moved to to stretch and go farther from his body. And he ordered the land that he's going to to get closer to him. Then they can host him and the angel of Rahmah take over him. Allahu Akbar. Imagine, ya akhwani, your life is not coincident. Everything around you is not coincident. If you do the sin and you didn't get caught by your dad or your mom or your wife or your husband, doesn't mean that you didn't get caught. Because I told you, be careful with the 10 witnesses upon you. They're going to be witness who? The angel of the katabah, the ones that they write down everything for you, and the day and night, and your neighbor, and your wall, and the gr- ground that you're praying on, and the masjid aliyah, and the people among us. This guy, he was crazy. One person met me yesterday and he said to me, there's nobody in Stanford calling for Islam except you. I said to him, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. I want thousand and thousand of people, but people are running for dunya because they have to pay the bill he said to me but you don't have bill I said to him I have somebody else paid for me he said to me who the masjid I said to him no Allah when you know the trick you get comfortable huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala huwa razzaq you are not the provider ya akhi and not the job will provide me the provider is Allah rah sahha wa la Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said qala the risk in the sama, he didn't put it in the earth because he knows that you're going to play with it. You're going to scare me? You're going to tell me my job in jeopardy because I'm holding your paycheck? No, Habibi. Allah is the provider. And I report to him. And if you report to Allah and you fear Allah, and you fear the hafaza of Allah, and you fear the night and the morning, and you fear the wall, and you fear your musalla, and you know that the musalla will cry for you, then where is your musalla? If your home is your musalla, it's going to cry upon you. If the doors that you're knocking in the night, and give them the food, and give them the sadaqah, they will be waiting for you. Allah will stretch your life, because there is people depend on you. But who's depending on you? Oh, I have a lot of people. I have my wife, and I have my kids, and I have this, and I have that. That's it. Allah is the provider. He will take you tomorrow, and they will survive, by the way. <laughs> Everybody think, what they will happen after I die? Allah will take care of them. Why? Because you were in the womb of your mother, and he provided you a shelter and food and everything, and he didn't have a work permit yet. <laughs> right or wrong? Then we have to understand, ya ikhwani, who is going to cry upon us? Not your father, not your mother, not your brother, not your son, not your wife. Make everything cry for you when you leave your departure. Make your spot saying, Allahumma rahamu. Make the ground that you will be buried welcome you and comfort you. Make the sama cry upon you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rahim bil ibad, then irham al ibad insha'Allah.